Hi, everybody. Um, it's 4.03, and I'm going to propose that we give it uh, one more minute before we start. Okay, <clears throat> I think it's been about a minute. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first CAG meeting of 2024. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for being with us this afternoon and for taking the time to, to be here. Um, Desiree, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Desiree Gazzo. I am here tonight um, on behalf of DDC representing the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project um, with HNTB Lero, the JV Project Manage Program Manager, Construction Manager for the project. Um, it is CAG meeting 41. Um, and we'll get started now as long as everybody can hear me and see my screen. Okay. Great. All right, so project area overview, we have our project area one in yellow, project area two in the kind of salmon color, and then parallel conveyance uh, in the kind of red red color. Uh, our ESCR focus area topics for today. Oh, it looks like someone is drawing on the screen and I'm not sure how that happened. Um. But maybe when I flip the slide, it'll go away. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I don't know how to like clear whiteboard. Um, clear. Okay, there we go. I figured it out. Look at that. Okay. Um, so we will be covering, apologies for that. We will be covering most of the uh, focus area topics today. Um, so we have, we'll start with hiring compliance. We have an event update, and then we have uh, Steven Anderson from Bowie Studios, who's going to give the quarterly update. Um, we have a community outreach announcement, um, and then we'll go over the overview of contracts. So I am going to pass it over to Steven for the first couple of slides. Hi, good afternoon. Happy New Year, all. Uh... Stephen Anderson here. I do have a, just a few updates regarding a couple of events that's coming up that I would like to highlight starting here on this first slide. Um, we will be attending uh, a Queen's job fair um, that basically is it will represent the Esker project. Um, the project team will be present as well as we have our own virtual event that's, um, and this is a quarterly infra session um, that we plan for specifically the ESCO project area. Um, and we will have unions um, joining us to share information about how to join the union and 
you know, what to expect, things that uh, um, they may not know, um, but also to get some, you know, direct intel on, um, you know, the, the process. And so with that, we will have uh, uh, local 1010, local 731, as well as the Union District of Carpenters attending um, and a few working with uh, a few other CBOs, you know, who support also union enrollment um, who will be joining us during that um, session. Um, please do share the flyer. We have a we have a save the date flyer that we will be distributing as well as a, um, a more detailed update flyer, uh, updated flyer that we'll be um, sharing in the next couple of weeks. So um, please do share it with the community and invite them to, to join us. Next slide, please. Um, as far as the hiring numbers are concerned, um, not much change on uh, on the PMCM team um, that we have to report. Um, these numbers are, are, are pretty much the same. Uh, when it comes to right now, we have the, the 200 total staff that's on the PMCM team, uh, most of which were existing. Um, any up job open opportunities, we do post on the work with us webpage. So as as those as this information is updated, we will update you all as well. Next slide, please. Uh, on the general construction team, um, we do have more movement on the PA1 team versus uh, what was going on with Project Area 2, which is um, in the process of winding down. Uh, we've had an increase uh, on the generally uh, on the general contractor staff for PA1 um, that has gone up to a total of um, 1,225. Um, and then on the PA2 side, the, the staff is a little over 600. Um, and here you see the, the breakdown with regards to the percentage of the existing staff and existing staff. But with that, we mean the staff who were um, working for the, the, the employer prior to the project start. Um, and then also the new hires are staff members hired since then. Uh, most of which on the general contracting staff, I would say over, over 98% of them are union labor. Um, and, and so as a, due to the, the contractual obligations with the unions. Um, with regards to the minority women um, owned businesses, uh, their, the percentage there reflects, you know, the, their particular hires, and then you see the breakdown of the minorities, males and females accordingly. Next slide, please. Um, so here we did make some, you know, taking some of the suggestions from the last meeting, we wanted to highlight the, the percentage of the Sandy hires. Um, and, and what we are looking at here is the, the zip codes in particular, as it relates to you know the, the the sandy affected areas, and then the hires that are coming from that area, uh, from those specific zip codes. Um, and if you will, just wanted to point out the note as well, um, what existing means versus um, the other headers. Um, these numbers are individual, um, a, an individual breakdown of. Uh, of the data as it relates to the, the different um, locations across the city, the different bars across the city, as well as outside of the city. Um, as far as the MWBE goals and utilization of MWBE or um, companies, uh, definitely projected to meet the goals for PA1, PA2 on the um, PMCM team or on the PMCM side. Uh, and currently on both the PA1 and PA2 general contracting side, we are exceeding the goals um, for MWBE utilization. Um, and so that's that's been definitely something to, to some good news uh, as far as, you know, when we think about the escalator and its goals, that you know we, we are we're definitely excelling in, in a few areas, and this is one of them. Um, and as far as section three hires, 
Um, we have, you know, the, the six new hires, nine new hires on the GC teams, uh, PA1, and then two hires on the um, Project Area 2 side. Next slide, please. Uh, as always, our continued efforts, uh, we are working closely with not only local organizations and, and partners to, to share information and, and also um, add value uh, 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 and services to the local escrow community. Um, and we again, we do so with through our partnerships and continued effort to, to also provide jobs as well as opportunities. Um, training opportunities, working with those local organizations. Um, so more to come on the quarterly information session, um, as well as other events that, you know, other, especially when the, the weather warms up, um, we'll be engaged in, in continuing our tabling events in the area. Next slide. And this, this is a breakdown of, of the goals um, pertaining to some of the data mentioned earlier. Next slide. I think that's the last one. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions, comments? No. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Desiree. Moving on. Thanks so much, Stephen. Oh, yep. Wendy. Oh, there's a question. Sorry, um, couldn't find the button here. Um, there was a job, there was going to be a job like town hall or event in the neighborhood that Goals was going to be organizing. We heard about it back in November. Is there yes. any update on local, anything happening right here in the community? Well, so we do try to plan so, a, a few in in-person events in the local community. Uh, in the past, the last event was the uh, collaboration with Goals and the ESCO project team, um, where we had unions come out and, and you know, they were present for for that event. Um, and, and so, you know, more of that we we are continuing to plan, especially um, when the weather warms up again. Um, in between, we do collaborate with Henry Street Settlement uh, and, and um, on some of their job fairs. So, you know, and, and we'll help continue to help them promote as well. But we, we do collaborate in between our events as well um, on, on local events and providing information on any iron opportunities. Great, because I see your Manhattan numbers are still around, you know, they're under 3% for new hires, just like women are. But um, it'd be really great if we heard more about the training program opportunities in the community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people looking for new things these days. And for I sure. see unions hiring, but not, how do you get the training? Right, and, and a, a, a part of the reason and the focus of this event coming up is again, what we need to know or anyone who is interested in joining you needs to know before joining. So we will have a combination of um, union representation as well as training programs um, to, to kind of provide information on what steps are, are needed to, to, to join. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shahida has a question. Yes, I wanted to know, would you be able to provide uh, clarity, if not done already, um, on the requirements for section three? Well, with Section 3 individuals, we, we are looking at um, a few factors and the requirements are based on the HUD standards, um, income standards. So looking at the, the income, the uh, income of the household, as well as, um, you know, their, their, where they actually live um, are, are factors. Um, the, the challenge here, um, and, you know, I, I I've gone through it before in other presentations, but for your knowledge, is the the fact that most of the hirings are coming through the unions, um, and so the the reporting is um, very limited as far as who are the section three individuals that um, are on the project, and so we we can report what we can, but outside of that, 
if there are opportunities um, that, you know, are, or we, where we could hire more local Section 3 individuals, um, we do promote those as well as they come up. Okay, great. Would you okay. would someone be able to send me that information or is it let me know where I can find all of the requirements because that was a very brief explanation. Um for sure. Me, um, send me that information it would be we can, very helpful. We're gonna we're gonna put a link in the chat um okay. for the fact sheet that we created for the project and that'll give you a start from yeah. with the information. And then Stephen, if you want to pass along any other information to Paula and Tara, they can provide it then. Yeah, Thank sure. you very much. But, Yep, yeah, you can follow up after. Parker sure. is going to put the put pop the link in the chat for our um, work with us page and the link mm -hmm. to the fact sheet, which I believe has all has the requirements on right. it as well. It has the the breakdown of you know pertinence. Yep. <laughs> Great. Good. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you again, Stephen, and thanks everyone yeah. for your questions. Um, and we'll have more the registration for the March. 13th virtual event, unions, 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 uh, that will should be available um, next week. And again, we'd be more than happy to provide you with uh, flyers for your buildings or post um, flyers anywhere you'd like. Um, and we will have that translated uh, as well. So uh, please reach out to our um, CCLs if you'd like us to, again, come post those flyers around or um, we could, again, stand in the lobbies of buildings or outside your buildings if it's not too bad out um, and distribute the flyers as well. So thank you. Um, and then speaking of community construction liaisons, uh, we have a new community construction liaison for Project Area 1 who we'd like to introduce today, um, Pauline Chan. Um, she has six years of experience as a CCL for DDC um, in this area. Pauline, are you on? Would you like to say hello? No, we can't hear. Can't hear her. Oh, maybe it's not working. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even. Sure. I'm looking at the list of participants. I'm not sure Pauline is on. Nope, she's on. She's. I okay. see her. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear? Oh, now we can hear you. Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you? Yeah, I'm so happy to join the uh, ASCA program. Thank you for the opportunity. So um, I speak Chinese, Cantonese, and um, Mandarin. So any question, any concern, please feel free to contact us. And also you can go to the, our website, use the inquire tool to like, let us know any questions. So we are here for you. Thank you. I hope to see everyone soon. Great. Thanks, Pauline. Um, and there's just a bit of information here about Pauline, and um, you'll see her around the neighborhood and at CB3 events as well. Um, um, so... Desiree, uh, Frank put a question in the chat about oh. this. Oh. oh, okay. And then Michael um... answered it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joyce had to leave. Um, unfortunately, we loved Joyce. Um, and uh, so, and now Pauline is on board. Um, and again, she is a seasoned um, DDC CCL um, and I has worked on several projects, um, you know, down in uh, lower Manhattan. And um, we're really grateful to have her on our team as well. So um, we thank Pauline for joining and um, if, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any uh, questions of the project to Vanessa or Pauline for uh, PA1 and then all of our other CCLs for the rest of the program. And thank you, Michael, for <laughs> assisting with the response. Um, so jumping into our uh, overview of contracts, um, much of the information uh, has remained kind of similar here for project area one. Uh, the work began at ball fields three, four, and five, um, and the construction or restoration, I should say, of fields one and two is still in progress. Uh, for project area two, um, the site restoration is complete south of East 20th Street. There's some punch list work ongoing. Uh, the greenway is open, and we just found out that gates seven and eight are to be installed in March. And that will be, I think, the last two gates um, 
within Project Area 2. So that's very exciting news. Um, for parallel conveyance, uh, the mobilization for the interceptor gate chamber and building construction um, have begun. We'll begin. Parker will talk more about that. <laughs> Parker will talk more about that in the PC slides. Um, subsurface investigations are in progress at Houston and Delancey Street. Um, and water main replacement is in progress at Avenue C between East 18th and, and East 23rd. So Parker will have more about parallel conveyance uh, towards the end of the um, slideshow. So for construction activities, again, for PA1, we mentioned um, most of the most of the items that are um, ongoing, and we have uh, some photos of the restoration work in the next uh, photo. Um, and then just please remember to check in with the bulletins um, there. And I will note there was a glitch with posting the most recent bulletin and advisory um, to the website. So we do apologize, but the um, the information for uh, that was supposed to be posted on Friday uh, is not posted yet. So we are working to figure out what is what's happening. Um, but you know, Paula and Tara, we could also let you know once that's up, so that way it could alert um, the rest of the the CAG members. Um, but uh, we could also provide you with the most updated bulletin so that it could be distributed as well. Um, so a couple of construction photos here. Um, on the left-hand side is the leveled Esplanade pier caps. Um, and then on the right-hand side is the prefabricated Esplanade support beams getting put in place. Uh, so they are really moving with the Esplanade work here, as you could see. Um, and again, the use of the precast um, the precast pieces really, again, makes the work go quicker and they can do all that work from uh, from the water side, which is which is really helpful. Um, the construction photos and we apologize for the one on the right. We're going to try and get a, a better photo there, but um, I think you could see the how uh, far the construction of the Delancey Street Bridge um, ramp piers are moving along. Um, so if you're, you know, just for orientation, that's the Williamsburg Bridge and then East River Housing is here. Um, I will say that the crew has hit a couple of obstructions when they were doing the work here. Um, and we talked to a couple of folks that, you know, the work was a bit louder than normal. So as with what happened at PA2 when we were doing work in Asser Levy Playground, um, when they're doing work, they occasionally do hit items underground. Um, and have to kind of work through them. So um, again, we do apologize for those periods where it's a bit louder, um, but they are continuing to move forward with uh, with the Del with the Delancey Street Bridge. Um, and these are some really great photos of the progress there. For East 10th Street, um, which we wanted to give an update on. So the utility relocations and upgrades are completed. Uh, the work that is happening right now is a 42 inch sewer work um, at East 10th Street and Avenue D. And then upcoming will be the 42 inch sewer work on East 10th Street between Avenue D and the FDR Drive. So we are looking um, to provide uh, a better um, idea of when exactly that work will start. Um, and then in March of 2024, March of this year, they will begin the micro tunneling under the FDR for the 42 inch sewer. So this work should be, um, you know, coming up and that will be really the, the, the that's the main focus in this area. Um, and then next year, they'll start the um, 10th Street Bridge demolition and reconstruction. So we'll be coming back with more information about the work that's happening um, at East 10th Street. Um, so one of the requests was a bit of more information on um, amenity openings, um, though we can't provide at this point the exact um, dates that the amenities will open. Um, we did want to give an overview of uh, general what what we can expect. So over the summer of 2024, starting with um, ball field one and two 
um, towards the end of May, um, the amenities south of the Williamsburg Bridge will begin to open. So again, through um, 2024, um, the anticipated amenities that will be open will be fields one and two, um, and then the Corlears Hook Park flagpole area, the amphitheater seating area without the canopy that will come back um, uh, later on to put that in place. Um, and then the nature exploration and water play, Delancey Street Lawn, the South or the Southern Basketball Courts, uh, barbecue area, the Esplanade and Pathways south of the Williamsburg Bridge, and then the Delancey Street and Corlears Hook um, Park pedestrian bridges. Uh, the plantings in this area won't be able to be installed until fall 2024. So um, as the areas open, um, you know, again, starting in uh, the end of May, beginning of June, um, the, the areas won't be planted at that point, and they will have to wait until, it seems like, it looks like they'll have to wait till fall uh, planting season to plant uh, the areas. Uh, we're still working on what exactly will open with ball fields one and two, so I don't have that specific answer. Um, but again, as we get closer to May, we will have a better idea, or as we, you know, enter into the spring here, we will have a better idea, and we'll provide those updates um, as we as we receive them. Um, the compost yard um, is still under design, so that has an expected opening of 2026 with the shared use path as well in 2026. And then the <clears throat> amphitheater stage and canopy construction um, is set to begin in 2025, opening in 2026. Um, and then we'll talk more about the fireboat house in the upcoming slides. Um, so we hope this offers a bit more um, information. And then again, we will, you know, we are here every month. So as we receive um, more information, we will continue to uh, provide updates. Uh, for the PA1 construction progress, we do have an update on the um, anticipated timeline. Um, there are a few pushes uh, for phase one. Um, however, again, the project is still on time. Um, the Corlears Hook Park uh, has been pushed about to the time when uh, the bridge is anticipated. So the summer of 2024, again, you know, we'll still see um, south of Grand Street opening um, this year. And then there is um, a bit of the Grand Street to Stanton Street, which will push um, into 2025. Um, you know, there were, this was the, the kind of first phase of the project. So there were a lot of um, <clears throat> learning points, a lot of coordination that had to happen for the project um, that now is moving much quicker as we are now, you know, approaching, um, you know, this new year of 2024 and, uh, and phase two. So, um, you know, again, the project is still on schedule to open at the end of 2026, um, but some of the uh, some of the areas in phase one will have a bit of an extended um, period of opening. But again, we are excited to have, uh, you know, the ball fields one and two, and then um, the amenities start to roll out as the um, as the summer comes. Um, I think at one of the last meetings, there was a request for a photo of the uh, latest amphitheater canopy design. So this is um, a rendering from the March 2023 PDC final design review. And um, we have a link in here as well. So um, once we post this, it, as long as the website is working, um, we can, we could also just send a PDF of this, um, Paula, as well. Um, if, it, I'm, if we can't get it up on the up on the website uh, tomorrow, but hopefully everything will be okay for tomorrow. Um, but then you'll be able to uh, to access that for the what we've heard slide. Um, just to kind of close the loop on that South Street Montgomery Street intersection meeting that we had, um, the 
escrow contractor has added the pictorial signage to the FDR on-ramp um, to deter pedestrians and cyclists. And DOT is working with Pier 42 to ensure safe access when the park opens in spring of 2024. Um, the items, action items from that meeting um, were that DOT will evaluate the timing of the pedestrian walk signals and the feasibility of delayed um, green vehicular signals. Uh, we are just about um, completed with the CAG written inquiries that we've um, that we've received um, since last year. Um, we just kind of put them all together. Again, many of the inquiries that we've received have been addressed in the CAG meetings, um, but we've been kind of compiling a list to provide um, a formal written response. So that's just being finalized, and then we'll send that over, um, Paula and Tara, to you to distribute. There was a question um, about the passive lawn closure and the esplanade. Um, so when the passive lawn closes, for the staging of the Delancey Street and Corlears Hook pedestrian bridges, the adjacent esplanade um, is expected to remain open. Um, so we just wanted to address that um, as well. Uh, for the fireboat house update, um, so in December of last year, which it sounds weird to say because we're just in 2024 now, um, but the section 106 uh, there was a section 106 consultation with SHPO and New York City Landmarks Preservation to review the building conditions and proposed um, demolition. Um, this, uh, this month, OMB will notify uh, the section 106 consulting parties, which are listed here, of the structural concerns recently discovered. Um, and DOB is performing an evaluation, the Department of Buildings, um, of the building uh, the next step is the analysis of alternatives. So per SHPO, um, OMB, DDC, and Parks is to prepare an analysis of alternatives. And then the city is to present the findings to the consulting parties in a few weeks. Um, and then OMB will provide a project update to the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. Um, and then then they will provide an alter the alternatives analysis to the SHPO, LPC, and consulting parties for a 30-day comment period. Um, after that, there would be a draft um, of an amendment to the 106 programmatic agreement. So this would identify the mitigation for the adverse effect. Um, and then OMB would prepare a draft of the amendment to the Section 106 programmatic agreement, which would stipulate the mitigation to be conducted. Um, and then there would be a 30-day comment period. Um, and then the uh, amendment to the program, programmatic agreement would be executed. So that was a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, we will again, continue to provide, provide updates on this, uh, you know, on this review process. Um, really, the next steps is this analysis of alternatives, um, which we will, again, which, you know, will just be starting. So, um, again, I, I see Michael has his hand up. Michael, I'll, I will address your question, you know, at the end of the presentation, but, um, you know, this is in motion and, um, again, we'll provide updates uh, monthly as we have them. Um, for PA2 construction progress, very short. Um, the north entrance um, at East 23rd Street is closed there due to the Solar One construction work. The remainder of Sty Cove Park is open, um, and the area connecting to East River Park is also open. We're very excited about that. <laughs> Uh, for environmental reporting update for AQM, um, I don't believe the monitoring locations have changed since we last presented. Um, and for the December 2023 update, um, they were um, light in December. Um, most of the uh, alert durations were about 15, you know, around 15 minutes. Um, some were from the on-site construction activities some from off-site construction activities or other projects in the area. Um, and then we have the mitigations listed, which again is most of the time the dust suppression techniques. So um, the contractor has been really cognizant to make sure that um, 
you know, these numbers stay low. Uh, for PA2, um, we similarly had um, good readings this month, um, not very many actually, and then the couple um, that that were a bit lengthier uh, were during um, were unknown offsite activities. So, um, you know, I think we have been relaying, um, you know, the concerns back to the contractor, and they really are trying to um, to minimize minimize that. So I'm going to hand the PC portion of this over to Parker um, and he will he will do that. Oops, sorry, I meant to mute. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, so for a parallel conveyance, this is uh, an overview of all of the locations where they are currently working. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the map. Uh, the only real new things on here from last month are the mobilization in Coriliosook Park, which we have a slide dedicated to uh, in a few. And then uh, they've begun doing water main work in the northern reaches near Stytown and Peter Cooper Village. Or they haven't started. I think the first, yes, the first shutdown is a test shutdown tonight. Um, these shouldn't interrupt people's water service up there because all of those buildings have multiple feeds, but it's a uh, progression of work in the northern reaches. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, and then this is a, uh, this is new. Um, we tried to create a timeline similar to the other projects um, that shows the work. We broke it down by location um, as shown on the last slide. It's very high level, obviously, um, with the sort of more red colors being uh, the sewer work. So the locations on the map that are red, it's the same red uh, where they're installing the sewers mostly in the streets. And then the orange is the interceptor gate chambers and buildings, which uh, are going to be on in Corlears of Park, which is the work they're starting soon. And then on East 20th Street. Um, and I just want to note that they're not going to be constantly working at all of these locations throughout these time frames as the people who live on these streets know they sort of jump around from location to location but this is the general timeline for how long uh, the operations will take at each location and i also want to note that for coilers park i chose this going until june 2026 but as we've previously stated um, the closure of the ball fields will be done next uh summer it's it's uh but then after they reopen the ball field they'll still be doing some work on the interceptor gate building in Corlears Park adjacent to the FDR until 2026. Um and so this this is a slide we've showed before but I just wanted to bring it back because they have uh DDC and parks have worked out um exactly where uh the contractor will be able to close off the ball field and the playground so Beginning next week, the contractor will start mobilizing to close these areas off to do the construction um, of the interceptor gate chamber, which requires the deep excavation that we've gone over over the past few months. Um, and um, yes, as I just said, uh, the closed off ball portion of the ball field and playground will reopen next summer. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then um, to answer some questions we've gotten over the past few months about parallel conveyance, along Avenue C, um, someone asked if there would be more trees planted if, uh, to make up for the ones that were cut down along East 20th Street for the Interceptor Gate building. And there are four trees that will be planted along Avenue C between East 20th and 23rd Street. And then back to the Corridor Park, um, there were, I know there had been a question at the community board meeting about how the contractor was gonna get the excavator and the crane and all this equipment in and out of the park. And if the parks department's installing new um, turf in the remaining portion of the field, would the contractor have to drive over that to remove all this stuff once they've built the building? And the answer is no, they will bring the materials in along the FDR, sort of the share where there's an existing closure that was the shared use path. And then 
move it into place in the newly closed areas. And then they'll remove the excavators and crane prior to the constructing the building. So the building will not be in the way. They'll be able to move it out and then construct the building. Um, but that is the last, yep, that's all we have. So I guess now we can take questions about all of the projects or contracts. Michael, you're up. Thank you. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Um, Parker, for the parallel conveyance closure of the ball field, when you say next summer, can you just confirm, do you mean summer 2024 or summer 2025? Sorry, summer 2025. Sorry, summer 2025. Okay, thank you. Um, so then that leads to my next comment, which is um, on your maps moving forward then, like so slide 18 that Desiree showed about the uh, flagpole area and other areas opening up, all of those areas in Corlears should be marked as closed because right now it looks like all of Corlears would be opened in summer of 2024 and that's not the case. So yes. I don't want to give people yes. false hope that they will have access to the whole park when they won't. So if you guys okay, can make sure can update update that, yeah, that those are updated. Um, and then my next series of questions obviously is about the fire boathouse and uh, because I think we're all sort of shocked to learn that this is now going to be demolished when we all thought it was going to be saved. So um, my questions are like, why wasn't some sort of assessment into the building structure done before the project even started to assess whether or not it was viable? And the second part of that is, is any of the damage that is now sort of categorizing this building needing to be demolished was that caused by the work that's happening around it? So if you can answer those two first, then I can ask my next ones. Yes. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, um, Michael. So I guess getting, go, so going to the first uh, question first, um, and I don't, I, I would have to pull up my talking points, I don't have them right in front of me, but essentially it's the, it's mostly the piers that are underneath the structure of the building. That is the main concern here. And when the piers were initially assessed, um, there was not, the, the degradation that is there now was not there uh, previously. Um, it's, they're, you know, the piers are, are very old and um, it is not at all because of the new work that's been done now th regarding the Esker project. It's just the degradation of the old piers. So we could certainly provide um, perhaps a little bit more detail um, in, in a written response, um, but essentially that that's the, the main kind of overview of, of that, that it wasn't expected. Um, for them to be in the shape that they're in right now. And that's why everything is kind of being reassessed. So then my, my next question related to that is then, what does that mean for the design of that area? Because that area was specifically designed to sort of hug that building um, and keep that building where it was. So is that area now being redesigned or is a new building? I know that there's there's still talk about what that what's going to replace the the space that Lower East Side, East Side Ecology Center is losing, but is there any update on, on what's going to be happening in that area now that that building will be there? Hi, yeah, Michael. So I think... Jeff. Oh, sorry, oh. Desiree. I was just going <laughs> to no, say no, no, de ahead, Jeff. no decisions have been made as of yet. Right. Yep. Okay. That's exactly what I was saying. Right. There, there hasn't been a decision that the building will be demolished yet. So there hasn't okay. been uh, a discussion around what would replace it because it is as Jeff said, no decision has been made yet. Okay, so then the last thing I just wanna say is that I feel very, very, very strongly, and I think most people do, that whatever happens with, with replacement space for the Lower East Side Ecology Center has to be equivalent to the amount of space they're losing from that building. It has to be equivalent or greater, it cannot be less than that space. They, they not only use that space for staff, but they use it for a lot of educational programming, 
Um, so just keep that in mind when you're talking to whoever you're talking to about new space for them. Thank you. We will That's take that back. Thank you. Uh, Christine. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I have a few questions too, but I want to start with something positive, maybe very exciting to see your timeline for everything opening up in 2026. And when I saw that big overview, one of the um, things that popped in my mind is um, the flyover bridge that was uh, supposed to be installed uh, at the pinch point by Con Edison. So is that also going to be built by 2026 or is that something that's going to be, be built afterwards? Hi, Christine. Uh, uh, that, will... that is, oh. <laughs> Desiree, I'm trying to give you some help here. You know, joking. Oh, okay, uh, go, 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 Jeff, <laughs> go, please. <laughs> uh, no, the short answer is no, that will not be built by the end of 2026. There have been a lot of challenges with uh, figuring out the best alignment for that bridge in relation to Con Edison and how they use the area for their operations. So we hope to have more information about the next step for that project very soon. I know uh, the community board to the north, CB6, has been very eagerly awaiting an update on that as well. So we're, we're trying to get that as quickly as possible. But there's still a commitment to create something that uh, will replace what we have now. Correct. There's still money in DDC's budget to do that. Uh, we're just trying to figure out once we have the alignment, we can start the design, et cetera. Great. Yeah, no, and um, I appreciate that. And uh, again, it's one of the many, uh, you know, things that the community, I think, is really looking forward to. Uh, I obviously would like to talk uh, or ask some questions about the Fireboat House. Um, I still don't, when you say analysis of alternatives, I just don't understand what that even means. Um, uh, you know, in terms of what are the alternatives or does that also include an analysis of how the ecology center will um, get replacement space? Oh, Jeff, you're not going to answer. Sorry. Uh, Wendy, I think I think there's... Oh, Christine, sorry, I'm reading Wendy's name and Diane's name. Christine, um, I think, you know, they are looking into what, what those alternatives can be, um, and that would be part of the analysis. Again, not completely involved, but you know, it, it may be replacing the peers or, you know, so they have to look at what the different options are enabled, you know, in this, uh, similar to, um, you know, the options that were available or that could have happened when, you know, building this park, there are, you know, there's always different options and they have to take a look at them to see uh, the cost, the value, the the constructability, the time, the, you know, given the schedule. So they, they'll look at all that um, and then, again, put together this um, this report, uh, which will include all of that. Yeah, well, I, I hope that report will also consider um, the needs that the park has going forward and um, what this building um, was really meant to be, which was an anchor for the park and to uh, create, really provide programming space for stewardship, for environmental education, which I think is critical uh, for the park and for our community, and uh, also office space. So there was a lot, um, there was a lot being packed into this building, uh, including public bathrooms, and um, they really need to be replaced um, in um, inadequate uh, amounts. And then I have one last question for now, and that is um, I sort of dug out um, a bit, uh, an ESCO bit um, package that was released in June of 2022 uh, that was really looking into uh, rehabbing of piles. It was the piles under the fireboat house and also a small section of the esplanade. And I'm just wondering what happened to that uh, contract and uh, whether any work was performed or whether um, 
yeah or you know um or whether you in uh june of 2022 when you rewarded this contract uh, already uh found out the dire need of um of the uh, piles under the building yeah and um christine not knowing exactly but that uh perhaps was the contract that is that was performing the work right now or that had just recently performed the inspection work um, that discovered that the piles were in uh, the shape that they're in. So um, yes, I'm assuming is. that, is that right? Is that right, Jeff? Yes, yeah. that's, that was how we identified some of those challenges that we've discussed. Hmm. Yeah. Is there any reason why that work was so delayed? That particular contract? Mm -hmm. um, I think it was always intended to be bid out after the larger ESCR package. It was always a separate contract. And I, I think I mentioned this the other day at the community board. I don't remember the rationale as to why it was done separately. Uh, but and I, sorry, I apologize. I know I said that before. So maybe we can get some clarity. Yeah, no, I, I would appreciate it. And also, you know, that contract also had other work uh, uh, closer um, to the amphitheater where, you know, where there is this bend, uh, where the esplanade uh, goes um, from south facing to east facing. Um, and I guess that work is still getting performed. Yeah, there's yeah, some esplanade can... work around Corlier's Hook, if that's what you're referring to. That's part of this separate, smaller contract. All right, thank you. Uh, Diane? Sorry. Um, so on this slide, um, Desiree and Jeff, bullet point 4A. Um, so, it says identify mitigation for the adverse effect. So I think it's, I think it should say if demo is the preferred action. If that's, yes. is, is yes, that yes, what yes, that should yes. say, is. right? Yep. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. And then it says likely HABS recordation. Can you talk to us about what that means? Um. Jeff, do you know what specifically the HABS recordation is? I apologize, I don't. Yeah, I think Chris, um, I think Diane, we might have to get back to you on that on what that is specifically. Okay, yeah, that's because that goes to the question or the point that's <laughs> already been raised is that you know what what does mitigation mean and does it include mitigation for the loss of that community anchor space that we have in the park um, for the ecology center and more. Um, that's been the the anchor in the park for decades. Um, and so losing the space is more than just losing a historic building. Um, and so I would like to understand, you know, what the guardrails are there. Okay. And also, I think if there are the, like some very specific questions on the fire boathouse that we might not have all the answers to, please, you know, I know you've done this with other, um, you know, other items that we've brought here. Um, if, if the CAG wants to, um, you know, submit uh, a bunch of questions, we could certainly have them responded to um, by, you know, perhaps people that are a little bit closer to this than we are, um, you know, feel free to to do that as well. Yeah, I think I'll take a better look at this slide. Um, I yeah. had asked Jeff at Community Board 3 if we could have a timeline, and I think this is getting closer to the timeline, but I just kind of want to lay out a little more detail and see if I'm understanding it correctly. So um, we'll, do, we'll take a better look at this slide. Thank you. Okay. And I think the uh, the Habs uh, recordation that that's listed there is, I think, the document document documentation of the um, building a historic American building survey uh -huh. is what that 
HABS sounds, um, stands for. Um, so it is the photography and documentation of the building um, again before it, before it's demolished. Yeah, that's my concern. I mean, obviously we don't want to lose the building. Obviously, right, right. if no, we can't avoid losing the building, then yes, you know, we should document it. But, right. you know, it, it doesn't seem like any of this process and mitigation really addresses, you know, that other concern about the community anchor space. So, okay. If you guys can, yeah. you know, check on that, that'd be great. We'll Thanks. try, we'll, we'll try, we'll try and get back to you on that, you know, okay. as, as quicker than quick as possible. Great. Thank you. So Trevor just put his question in the chat on this topic, and I imagine Frank and Wendy's questions are probably on this topic or could be, but let's, um, can we address Trevor's question about how the public can participate in this? Yeah, I think these are perhaps, you know, we wanted to give the timeline, and I think we did that, so perhaps, and again, is where we are close to time, can would we be able to just get any other fire boats? house um, questions uh, kind of written out or emailed to us so that way we could just really have a good response um, provided to you um, you know as soon as we can by the folks who are who are closer to this um, and then if we have any other questions that we could maybe respond to right now um, then we could take those does that would that work I'll say sure. <laughs> um, so, so that being said, Frank and Wendy, do you have non fireboat house related questions? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Frank, just go ahead first, and then we'll take Wendy's. And then Paula, yeah, uh, Kate Scherer. Oh, sorry, Frank. Kate Scherer has an announcement before we end the call um, from DOT. So I okay. just want to make sure that I. Um, I, I remember, we remember that uh, after the questions. Okay. okay. Thanks, Desiree, is, so I can make my announcement. I can hold, sure. I mean, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Um, thanks, I'll be quick. Um, so as many of you may recall, um, we, DOT and the Parks Department, uh, along with our consultant team, have been studying um, the FDR Drive from Montgomery Street to East 14th Street um, as part of the Lower East Side East Village Waterfront Access Study. Um, we started that study last year, and many of you have participated in meetings and outreach events related to it. Um, and we are wrapping up the study and we are going to be presenting our findings at Community Board 3 next month at their Transportation Committee meeting. Um, that's on February 13th um, at 6.30 at the Dale Jones Birch uh, Community Center at, on Henry Street. I can put that address in the chat. Um, and I'll also be sending out an email blast, which I believe many of you are already subscribed to. Um, but if there are any questions, I'll also include my information in the chat. Thank you, Kate. And apologies for, for not uh, mentioning you before the Q&A. No, it's OK. I, you guys have a lot <laughs> to handle. Thanks. Uh, Kate, just since I was going to go next, um, what time is that meeting? Do you know? Yep. That is going to be at 630. Oh, great. The same time yeah. as my board meeting. Damn. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. Thanks. Um, Frank, and go ahead with your, your yeah, other so, question. Um, so I, I will do as well um, uh, uh, collate questions. Uh, so then I'll be very quick. Uh, it's just more of a, a statement. Then um, first and foremost, and I think I had said this before, uh, in past meetings when it comes to the Ecology Center and the Fire Boathouse and their placement in particular, is to make sure uh, that you are centering them and working with them. Uh, they are invaluable. And uh, even with the park closure, uh, particularly in uh, my neck of the woods, uh, they have really been ramping up uh, through a lot of difficulty uh, a lot of inconveniencing, but their uh, usual programming of uh, really uh, our population of Gouverneur Gardens, it's a low income population, as are a lot of the affordable housing on the waterfront. Uh, and they've really been instrumental uh, in doing uh, a lot of development 
um, and uh, education. And uh, we really need them, as people have been saying, as the anchor here uh, down in this neighborhood. Uh, we were able to uh, rescue, as I'll call it, those seals and, and have that happen in Pier 42. Uh, but the other anchor there in terms of a landmark is the Ecology Center space. Um, and they have been uh, for years selflessly just providing uh, resources to the outlining communities. And uh, uh, that's really, it's just more of a testimony that you can pass on. And um, I'll be working on, on some additional written testimony uh, for whatever can be applied because uh, it, it is just so vital that they return back there and be able to have that space and be able to flourish in that new park. So that's all I wanna say. And then again, we'll I'll help collate some questions. Hey, thanks, Frank. Wendy, do you still have a question? Yeah, thank you. Um, while well, Kate's still here, any chance that meeting can be taped? I also can't be present. I can check with Community Board 3 if they're able to do that. Um, I don't think they typically do that for their committee meetings, um, but I, I can ask if that's an option. Great, thank you. Now I have a couple other questions. Um, first, I was sent a picture of the new fields, one and two, and there's some repair work already going on there. What, or there's part of it that's cordoned off. What's happening? Uh, Wendy, uh, the, that, the fields are still under construction. You know, they're still putting up, um, what do you call it? They're still putting up light posts and foundations. And so it's not, complete yet that's the area is still under construction so I can take a you know I could reach out to the construction team to see what specifically is happening in said cordoned off area but um, you know please note that they're going to continue to be working um, on the air around the area you know in the area uh, as until it's finally open so but we could check in for you on that thank you um when they do open, will there be bathrooms or water available there for the sports people? Um, so I, yeah, I don't believe we're, we're still getting, um, we're still getting, we're still waiting for the feedback on what will open um, with, you know, with the ball fields. Um, so we are going to come back with more information on that. Um, the closest bathrooms again would have been you know the firehouse bathrooms when they were going to be completed um but when this lower part of the uh, ball fields opened or the lower part of the park opens um it seems like the closest uh restrooms would be at corlier hook um but i you know i'll go back i'll bring that back to see um, what kind of, uh, you know, if there will be water fountains, et cetera, open as well. That would be very helpful. Um, the um, I'm glad to see the composting is on the map, the composting yard. I want to echo oh, yeah. everybody else on the replacement space, a thousand square foot, um, you know, construction trailer. It's not really great for an ongoing program that does so much for the city. I went to Albany on Monday, on Tuesday to lobby for climate education and learned how little students are getting right now. And it's absolutely critical that groups, that Lower East Side Ecology Center be able to continue its important environmental education, stewardship, composting, and e-waste work. And, you know, we need space to accommodate that. And now bathrooms perhaps as well, huh? Um, so I wanna just underscore that importance like other people have. And I have another question that's toilet related. How exciting. <laughs> Many of us consider Tompkins Square Park as a form of mitigation. There's a lot more people in the park these days as you probably notice. Um, not all because of the park because East River Park is mostly closed, but there's no bathrooms there. And that's really kind of a public health in safety issue. And I wonder if, because we don't have the park, you know, access to the park, can that be a reason that the toilets get restored to Tompkins? We can bring that back to parks. 
that would be okay. a, a parks question. Yeah, and you know, I'm one of many seniors in the community who actually does use those bathrooms. It's, it's, it is community members as well. My, I live like quite a ways away, so that's important for me and other people. So thank you on that. Um, and um, I think that's pretty much my my list of questions right now. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so again, thanks everyone for attending tonight. Um, if Kate's, oh, Kate is still on. Kate, I imagine that the presentation, regardless of people can't attend, the presentation will be available um, for folks to view. Would that be correct? Yep, that's correct. If it's, um, okay, I, great. I one more, I think we're missing, Trevor has a question, his hand's raised. If we can just take oh, one more. Great. It's not yep. really a question, but Desiree, I had sent you a message early in the chat uh, about uh, CB3. Yep. I just wanted to for you to respond um, because we're usually alternating months. So I didn't know if we wanted to go uh, February um, because of a lot of new information. Um, but if you could just let me know by the end of today uh, whether we want to go in February and not March or March and February or both, um, considering all the information. Is it a possibility of letting you know tomorrow since? Tomorrow's fine, uh, but okay. I would uh, make sure you CC Susan because she's been asking me every day, as okay. you know, so. Yes, we'll do. Months. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, great. And then again, I would say if you have additional fireboat house um, questions, uh, please do send them to Paula and Tara um, who can, um, you know, compile them all together and then send them our way. Um, and we will be certain to respond to everything. And then again, we'll respond, we'll provide the written responses for the uh, the questions from last year as well. And thank you. Thanks, Desiree and Parker. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Night. Okay, everyone. So as we typically do, let's take like a two minute bio or otherwise break before we convene reconvene for the cat on see you in two
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hello. Hello, Michael. Um, Hi. So, hello, Christine. Perfect. Um, I, for reasons that should be obvious, I'm going to um, let Christine start us off. I presume you want to do that, Christine. Um, yeah, no, I, um, again, you know, I'm still trying to uh, wrap my head really around what all of this means and how serious the city takes uh, um, what they have heard from the community, I think, a bunch of times now that uh, um, we need replacement um, space uh, if indeed we are losing the fireboat house. And uh, I just want to share that um, uh, as Paula included in the email that the city sat down with us in um, uh, December after we had really requested a meeting for a really long time and they just sort of dropped this bombshell of uh, demolishing the fireboat house and um, offered us a office trailer in the compost yard. So um, it's 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 been just, um, well, I don't know, just uh, um, very stressful to to come to terms with these realities and to figure out what we can do um, to push back um, on it. And I wanna really thank everybody for their support and also our public officials who have been very supportive and um, just listened to our concerns. And I hope uh, we can maybe work on a list of things that you know we can ask as follow up uh, to just really um, wrap our heads around uh, all the questions that come up when with this project. Thank you, Christine. Um, Robin had her hand up, and then Wendy. Can you hear me? I'm 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 I got yep. crappy headphones. Sorry. Um, no, fine. I I I'm I'm what my concern about the vote house, obviously for, for all the right of the same reasons that we're talking about, but you know if if, if not having an outside engineering firm do an assessment and that it's the Department of Buildings and the city who I think, you know, don't have the funds or the means to fix things so they tear them down. So I'm wondering if there's any way we can get that to happen. Just like, you know, when Gail Brewer was the borough president, you know, she got a private firm to come in and do an assessment study of this whole plan. Is that possible? I would put in that, that would be my request. Wendy, or I'm just uh, wondering. Oh, is someone going to respond? Who said that, Paula? Yeah, I was just giving space for anyone to respond to your suggestion about an okay. outside. Um, Thank you, assessor evaluator. I think it's a great idea. I have no idea what it would cost. I know it wasn't the Del Tare's review that was something like forty thousand um, dollars. I don't know if uh, the current borough president would cough that up <laughs> or not. Maybe we could get someone pro bono to do it. You know, I, I'm. I mean, what about yeah. just getting a copy of what their review is and then sending that to a third party independent evaluator, which would be likely more affordable. Because that's, that's something awesome. I think in worst case scenario, you know, maybe with all of our various resources, we can pull together a fundraising thing for either or, but I'm just saying, I don't, I don't look at it as like a dead end. If, you know, they do a report, I, I think we just need to see their report and have someone else assess it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I was going to suggest you. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I sort of like the idea of taking their data and just independently reviewing it because, um, again, I'm still, and, and I asked this question about this contract that was let out in 2022. And, um, you know, so these divers must have gone down there and did an evaluation and they should at least provide that uh that report that already exists to us um, because apparently that's what they are basing this this whole uh, plan to demolish on from what I understand. Uh, Wendy, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say the what we heard sheet um, um, was, you know, it leaves off Lower East Side Ecology Center. And it actually isn't so much about what they heard. There's nothing there about what they heard from community. And maybe I, I was thinking, could the CAG write a response using their format that includes these concerns that they may never have thought about? About, as Diane was saying, the anchor. And, you know, the, it's when you're alone in the park, you don't feel that way when there's something like the fireboat house there. It, it was always a, a touchstone of safety, as, among other things. So, um, and but I have to correct myself, the Del Tare study was $80,000. So, you know, these are pricey and maybe there is a pro bono um, possibility um, to get the existing uh, reports reviewed. Um, that's all I have to say right now. Anybody else? Oh, Diane. Yeah, so um, I, you know, Desiree asked us to put together the list of questions. That seems, you know, like something we can do, you know, in email. Um, so my, I think my question is for Christina, given that, you know, they they gave us a little bit more information tonight than they did the last time they talked about this. And, uh, but not they they didn't have in-depth answers for the questions that we had uh you know do you want what can the, what else can the keg do besides put that list together that Desiree asked for Christine I'm sorry um I started talking uh when I was still muted. I think what we could also uh, as a CAG um, discuss is, you know, what are the important things that we want to see in the park um, in case that building has to be demolished? So, you know, what are, what is, what is an acceptable replacement? And uh, to sort of at least outline that to some extent. So, um, to make it clear that, um, for example, this this fabulous office trailer that they came up with is 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 really not uh, is not an option to to really spell out what our expectations are. Can I ask what was the what is the square footage of the fireboat house? Um, I think it is um, over two thousand square feet. Uh, if you if you take both levels, and you also and, use the outside, right, as a meeting space, working mm -hmm. with students. I know yeah, all I mean, sorts of fish stuff. Yeah. No, the, the, the location was great because the estuary education, we could just step out the building and do a workshop right there. Uh, that that space, you know, was public, um, but we used that also very heavily, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin. 
Yeah, hey, I, I'm Christine. I think I don't know what this trailer is that they're recommending. Is it something that they're saying it would be permanent or temporarily temporary until they decide and they build something? Uh, no, at the at the meeting in December, they were like, "This is one solution." You know, they they said we can give you this this trailer, and um, that was basically it. They were not uh, saying this is a, just a temporary patch until we've come up with something better. Right. They were saying, "Hey, trailer in the compost yard." Right. For for example, yeah. I mean, for example, you know, um, you just said, like, what other alternatives are there? And I, I just happened to be working at Socrates Sculpture Park this summer, and they're building an entire office in their park out of uh, old those old containers, you know, which are very useful. But, you know, it's a huge, expensive project that requires plumbing and electricity. I mean, those are all the things to think about, right? We're not just plopping a trailer in a park and what are they going to, like, jerry-rig you to the coal for your power like stuff like that you know so it's the building and the infrastructure to make sure the building is usable that i also would ask about uh susan um i may be off base uh with this or maybe christine you've already considered it but i think this is the time for priority budgeting throughout the districts for new york city and I don't know if you have approached your city council person uh, about, you know, possibly getting some priority budgeting for the Lower East Side Ecology Center. Yeah, uh, yeah. Susan. Susan, thanks for that comment. And uh, we always engage with our elected officials uh, on uh, budget issues. Uh, we have a whole bunch of issues, uh, budget holes to plug this year. Um, but I think um, this goes a little bit deeper because this was really a commitment that was made to the community in the um, when the uh, when the ESCO went forward. So it's an ESCO commitment. And um, we have worked actually with elected officials because we knew that not every need that the building has was met through uh, what we thought was, you know, ESCO commitments like uh, shoring up the building and uh, wet flood proofing it and doing a whole bunch of other things. So um, I think it's just a different scale of money that's needed. Um, and then there's also this question of, um, raising money for something, you know, it has to really um, pass muster with OMB and they are just going to say, well, this, this building is structurally unsound and we are not going to recommend that you fund that. So it's sort of this catch 22. Um, we really need to have um, um, the ESCO team figure out how to, how to make this right, I think. Okay, just before I go, you, um, I'm kind of assuming you've applied for city grants. Yes, we yeah. have. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Charles. Yeah, hi. Um, it said in that uh, email that you sent out that uh, the replacement or fixing up this particular structure, the firebite house would be 50% of replacement value. So I'm wondering what that number is, what's replacement value as far as what the city is considering for this. And it seems to me that if the building has to be torn down, we have to demand that it's replaced with at least the same uh, substance as the original building. We can't go for less. This was a guarantee that was originally in the entire plan. Also, if they're going to build a new building, that entire area is going to have to be redesigned. And so it's a huge deal, actually, this. And uh, I don't think we can let them, the city, just roll over and say, we're going to give you a temporary or some kind of a 
a metal structure that we can all live with. I don't think that's acceptable whatsoever. So that's just my comment. Thanks. Wendy? And I was going to suggest, um, and I don't know if anyone from Sty Cove is here today, but, um, you know, they're building a new building. And I know the fundraising started years ago for that. But the city, didn't the city put $3 million into that building? Is that what the number I heard? I could be wrong about that. Um, and they're getting a real center there that's permanent. And it, it's we really need to demand the same. Yeah, because we thought we had the same by assuming the fireboat house would stand. And um, yes, you're right. Uh, it was $3 million. It was an escrow commitment. And uh, the construction is underway. And Solar One and Stuyvesant uh, Cove um, has done fundraising for about 15 years on that building. I mean, this, is, is, this has been... Uh, a long drawn out uh, process and um, they had a gap of 3 million and um, that was provided to them to go forward with the construction. Do you know the total budget there? No, I don't. Okay. Um, and this is just a dumb idea. The Baruch bathhouse, could that work for you? Because there's a process underway, you know, they're talking about an ice arena in there. And I know that's very different, but this would be another kind of community resource in that space. Yeah, we, we really like to stay in East River Park because I think it's important to have a presence in the park. And, you know, of course, it's a, it's a huge, um, what Charles was alluding to, uh, it would be a huge redesign to think about how to build a new building. Uh, but there is a building that is actually getting built um, in the area. And that's, uh, I don't know whether you remember that slide that uh, Desiree showed. Uh, it's a maintenance uh, yard that uh, they're designing for the parks department. It has a rather uh, generous parking lot around it. So what I'm trying to say here is there's space um, it's a so far a one-story building, but but it could uh, very well be adopted. So, in other words, um, there is footprint and uh, space available. It is uh, clo closer to it's by the FDR and by the sh shared uh, whatever they call it, the uh, the bikeway, the greenway. And, uh, but I see that as a viable space that is, uh, is actually the only viable space in East River Park to, to, um, to undertake something like that. I wanna say that's really interesting. And that is one of the, um, sorry, um, one of the, three parking lots that are being built into East River Park, one of which is right on the bikeway near Pier 42, and the other one's further north, the third one. It's kind of excessive compared to, you know, what are we losing? And um, maybe that's really a good spot for it because it's directly adjacent to your, um, you know, it's in a good spot. You're right. Well, yeah, of course, it's it's not the location we would love to have uh, right by the water, but uh, it's it's in East River Park. I think it's it's viable. It wouldn't mean you have to redesign everything. You just have to really put some imagination into it. But but I also think we should just find out a little bit more what um, um, what it would take to to save uh, the fireboat house. So as far as next steps, I think we you know I think we've agreed that we'll you know 
take Desiree up on her offer and collect questions um, from CAG members that, that we can pass on to Desiree and, and her team. But in addition to that, is there an appetite? Like, how are you feeling, Christine, about the notion of a, of a CAG letter that doesn't just ask questions, but you know, clearly states a lot of the issues that we've just been talking about as far as, you know, what an adequate, if it really does have to be demolished, that there, you know, it, certain points of adequacy have to be met as far as a replacement space. So what are you, what are you feeling about a CAG letter, Christine? That would be great. Yeah, I, I think none of that can hurt, you know, because we really, um, as we have learned is, uh, we just really have to keep the pressure on so that uh, the city understands that uh, they really need to do something. Okay. So that's something that you're working on and that you'll be able to share at some yeah, point I, in the kind of near yeah, future? I, or? Yeah, I will draft something. I really wanted to wait until today's meeting to see mm -hmm. what they are presenting today to yeah. really make the letter as relevant and up to date as as I uh, as we can. But I will send uh, I will send a draft out um, by Friday or over the weekend. Okay. Right. Well, maybe I should say Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Wendy. So just when I was joining the CAG, there was a um, a foil about the soil studies that were made in 2019. And I'm just wondering if these reports will need to be foiled and will the CAG be able to do that? Or is that something to say that we're ready to, to foil if this resources aren't provided directly. So, Wendy, you mean this is a similar question to what Trevor was asking? Is this, oh, I did. Oh, is this I didn't report see his. going yeah. to be? He put he had put it in the chat um, uh, about whether the public can participate in this comment process once this analysis is done. And I actually, I think you've kind of raised a, a second issue, which is, will the public have access to the contents of the analysis? Will the CAG have access to it? Uh, yeah. Because all it said there was that the official section 106 partners would see it. Um, but, you know, what about community board, the CAG, you know, all the other stakeholders in the community, and then can the public have access to it and comment on it? Right. And if you remember with um, Del Tare's, the city would not release the um, hydrology studies, the value engineering report, et cetera, until they were done with their report. So, and that's the top line in the report is this is incomplete because we didn't have these um, underlying documents. So, you know, that'll add, can add years to the process, <laughs> but um I think these are really important points, all that are being made here towards getting answers on this and, you know, defining what's, what's figuring out what's next. Anybody else before I kind of, before we wrap? Yeah, I, I, believe it or not, after three years, I couldn't find the unmute button. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say that there. Um, I don't know. I doubt it's the same people that I dealt with. But so we were added, Friends of Quillish Hook Park. We asked to be added as a consultant party to the archaeological work that was happening happening in Corlears. So I don't see a reason why Lower East Side Ecology Center can't also be asked to be added as a consultant party which means that they would automatically get the report. Great, yeah, that's that's a good idea. We can always ask. Yep. Thanks for sharing that, some, You just have to sign some really long, like 80 page contract. <laughs> Is there a clause in there that you cannot discuss it publicly, what they share with you? 
Uh, I don't recall. I don't remember. But that's part of the reason why I don't know if you were on the call a few months ago when the uh, archaeological dig came, came up and I had I said, you know, I need to see if I have permission to share this because I had to report and everybody, you know, and so I but I did, you know, once uh, from what I understand, once the report is published, it becomes public. Okay. So that's why I was able to share it. Um, any other topics before I propose the or review the next steps for the fireboat house issue? Okay. Well, yeah, so I'm gonna um I'm gonna create a Google Doc. Sorry for those of you who don't like it, but as opposed to each of you emailing us questions related to the fireboat house, let's get them all you know, let's give you all access to a doc so you can see each other's questions and not um, replicate them. Um, so I will circulate that tomorrow to you all, again, to, to share your questions that, that you wanna submit about the Fireboat House. And then parallel to that, um, we will await your, um, your letter, Christine, and okay. um, conduct a vote to, Make sure we have 51% of CAG members um, approving it being sent on their behalf. Does that sound right? Am I missing anything? Just the idea that people would have a deadline to respond to add to the doc so it doesn't go on for months. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll set a deadline. Um, thank thank you. Sure. Like. How does two weeks sound? Too long. Too long? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, how about the end of next week? Yeah, because we do need to get those questions over to, um, I'm sorry, to DDC, and that they're going to take some time. So I know our next CAG meeting right now is the 22nd of February. Um, and at least it gives them like three weeks to get answers together. Okay. Unless we hear major objections, they're going to be due Friday, uh, February 2nd. I'll just go ahead and share the Google Doc uh, right after this meeting. Great. Thank you. Sure. All righty. Well, um, thank you all again for being here and for this good conversation. Um, uh, have a good rest of your night, and I'll, I'll send you the document right now. Night, everyone. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, thank everybody. You. Night. Thank Bye. you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.